Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Who is Who on Al Hikmat TV 24/7 online. We are very much blessed and privileged to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Commissioner Yvette Colburn. Did I have that correct? Yes, yes. And thank welcome you. to the show. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here. Good. And for you viewers out there worldwide, Commissioner Yvette Colburn is a commissioner with um, Merrimah City here, Florida, USA. She's been a vice mayor many times of the city. She first ran and won in 2013, and then she won back her seat in 2017. She has a very, very interesting uh, background, a lot of experience in community services. So stay tuned as we talk to her about her background, her community services, and her running back again 2021 for commissioner of C2 in Burma City. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens First, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trin Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trin Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250 or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725. So tell us a little bit uh, about your background. Um, I know before we came on the show, we got a little bit about your Jamaican background, your Panama background, your New York background. And I would always love to see because when I saw Kamala Harris became vice president of the United States of America, I thought about you. Do you know that? I thought about <laughs> Yvette Colburn. I said, listen, Yvette and, Co and, and Kamala, can pass the sisters that's number one and then i went back and i saw that you guys got a similar kind of east indian jamaican african background well, so could you share that with our viewers wonderful well i am certainly flattered <laughs> that you thought of me i think um it's a wonderful thing that we have a a female vice president and um someone who is 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 so diverse in mm -hmm. her culture as well. And there are some similarities in that um, my paternal grandmother um, is, is uh, of Indian descent. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have Indian uh, heritage and uh, my father was born in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I have that mixture which is similar to hers. Yes. Um, <laughs> so then very soon we <laughs> might see you in a couple of years running for vice president oh, as a president. Uh, oh, oh my goodness, you know, I am just seeking re-election to the city of Miramar commissioner right now. Well, you kind of tell her. Uh, I'm so tell proud of her. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, but I am certainly am very proud of her and her accomplishments. I, I won't want to take much. anything away from that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing for the city. Um, for the United States of America as Surely, a whole, yeah. for the country. Um, so yes, and in my my mother, grand my mother's uh, father, uh, he's also from from Jamaica. Uh, they migrated um, m migrated to to Panama mm -hmm. uh, to work on a Panama Canal. Oh, uh, interesting. So you know, during that time, you had a lot of individuals leaving Jamaica to work on the Panama Canal. Some mm -hmm. of which went back. Um, in his case, he stayed in Panama and built his family, built his family in Panama. So, so I do have that that diversity 
um, which is really beautiful for the city of Miramar because the city of Miramar is a very diverse uh, city as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, over 30% Hispanic. We have uh, probably one of the largest uh, Caribbean community, the largest Jamaican community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in South Florida. Uh, so I, I feel very much at home <laughs> yes. in the city of Miramar, where I've lived for almost 30 years now as well. So. Wow. And again, I mean, I must say, <laughs> with Kamala Harris being vice president, <laughs> it opens many doors for people like you with your political background and your community services etc so let me ask you what really motivated you to get involved in politics i mean i know you're running back for this seat now seat mm -hmm. one in <coughs> miramar city <coughs> but i mean very briefly yeah. because we want to talk a little more about um, some of the things you have accomplished mm -hmm. as yeah. commissioner in miramar city and some of the things you hope to accomplish yeah. when you are re-elected and i don't say if i say when <laughs> when you are re-elected some of the things that yeah. you hope to accomplish but what what motivated you to run um, as commissioner in miramar well i tell you i have um 30 years of public service experience in mm -hmm. this in miami-dade county and um for me it was a natural transition to go from leaving Miami-Dade County, um, service, service, uh, working with the public all those years, mm -hmm. and and becoming in, in becoming a commissioner. So during the time when I worked for Miami-Dade County, I was very involved in my community, serving on many boards with the city, and even helping out others who were running for for office as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I. You know, it's just, it was just a natural transition for me. Um, and it, the background, the experience, it really helped me once I was, re once I was elected in order to, to understand the issues mm -hmm. and to be able to assist the city and, in making a difference and really accomplishing um, many of the things that I have accomplished in the city. Um, it truly helps when you have that, that background. In addition, I do have a master's in public administration. So basically... That definitely enhances <laughs> your ability <laughs> to do these kind of community services. A absolutely. So uh, public service is, is a passion for me. This is, this is something that I've done for many years, and this is something that, you know, at this point have come natural for me. You know, I want to be there to assist and to help the public and to make a difference. And, and I have the education and the experience in order to do so and, and truly improve our community. Um, this board that you are serving on in Broward yes. County called MPO? Yes. What is this board all about and what kind of services this uh, okay. board or, or organization offers? Okay, so as a City of Miramar Commissioner, um, I represent, I am the commissioner that represents the City of Miramar mm -hmm. on the MPO board. The MPO board is a Metropolitan Planning Organization and what it does, it administers the funding for transportation, uh, road improvement, um, uh, federal funding that we receive mm -hmm. uh, to all municipalities, so we administer those. Um, I, I am very proud to say that since I have been on that board, uh, the city of Miramar has been able to secure almost $50 million in funding um, for sidewalks and road improvements. And, and those are things that are so needed in our communities. And over the next five years, we will see those improvements. We will mm -hmm. see that those, those changes in our community. You know, you'll see more bike lanes, you'll see, you know, lighting, because when, when we put in sidewalks, you know, it's not just sidewalks, you know, it's, it's a complete street grant. Mm -hmm. So they are looking at everything that makes that street complete for pedestrians to be able to walk, for the streets, for the cars that drive on it. You know, they consider everything in the area. And we have done some of those projects on, uh, both on the historic side of Miramar as well as on the western side of Miramar. Um, and they, they've been very successful. They've truly improved the areas. 
And I'm truly looking forward to seeing that the additional funding that we have received mm -hmm. um, spent over the next well, I mean, five I don't want to cut you, but <laughs> I, I, I must testify <laughs> to that because in the last um, many years that I've been in, more than 25 years or so in living in Merrimack City, mm -hmm. I have seen that, that kind of development and changes in the roads and the whole landscaping changes in Merrimack City over the last decade. And I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure credit comes to you for that because if you are with the MPO and you got over $50 million in funding, I mean, that is phenomenal. I mean, I, I can testify to that. I've seen the kind of beautiful changes yeah. on the walkways and the, um, the full nine yards. But speaking about grants, uh, yes. um, I understand that you were somewhat influential in the small business grants from Merrimack City. Tell us, tell our viewers a little bit because you know we got viewers worldwide. Yes. Someone may be sitting somewhere in New York, in Japan listening to this uh, interview, but they can have a relative with a business in Merrimack City. That's how small Abs the world absolutely. is. Absolutely, that, that is so true. That's why you know we love to do this kind of global discussions yeah. and somebody sitting somewhere in Jamaica and they got a relative. So what is a small business grant about? Okay, the city of Myanmar, um, we, we have small business grants. The federal government um, also have grants that they give to mm -hmm. municipalities throughout. And some of, in some areas, they have what they call CDBG funding. And CDBG funding is the federal funds for, for businesses and, and, and other economic development areas. Mm -hmm. But then you have areas that need it. You have small businesses that need these grants and they may not qualify uh, for the CDBG areas. One of the things that the city of Miramar has done is that we have invested in, in, in grants for our businesses mm -hmm. that, that cannot qualify for CDBG, for instance. And we have done a redevelopment on Miramar Parkway and 69th Avenue the B&M Shopping Plaza. Now this plaza was, you know, as we would say, a rundown. This <laughs> was really in need of improvement and it was a hole in a donut, meaning that all of the other commercial properties around were being, de were being developed. Right. Uh, you had Public Shopping Center, you had Bravo Supermarket, you have the city of Miramar was uh, developing their, their band shell and you had this shopping center and this shopping uh, center owner who was in need. And we were able to provide a grant, a matching grant for them to be able to develop that shopping center. And you should see how it has improved that area. In fact, it has actually attracted um, a new business, uh, Cleveland Ice Cream. And, and the maker of Cleveland Ice Cream is actually from a the person who used to make the ice cream, uh, one of our famous uh, uh, ice cream places in, in Davie, Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, it has really been, been an explosion when it comes to, to new people into the community and um, new business into the community, new money into the community. Mm -hmm. So it's, it just shows so how investment affects so the community. So those grants are only for plazas or just a small guy want to got a business in the <coughs> plaza, can he apply for a grant? Absolutely, we have different, we do have a different lot levels. of different, a lot of different, different grants program. Um, for for COVID-19, we have had uh, $10,000 grants for, for businesses just to help oh. out with their rents, uh, their mortgage or, or utilities, because these businesses, we know they were shut down. Yes. And, yes. and small businesses are, are really so important in mm -hmm, our community. Mm -hmm. They really are the strength of our community. And if our small businesses fail, then our communities, their communities fail. So we want to make sure our small businesses are successful, um, especially during this COVID-19. So soon after COVID-19 and, and the businesses were closed down before the federal government uh, provided grants for mm -hmm. us, the city of Miramar allocated a million dollars for our businesses so that they can get ten thousand dollar grants and and help them out help them to survive during this crisis that is phenomenal um, we were able to help many businesses but you can imagine how quickly 
that that type that type of funding runs out of so course of course well you know we what <laughs> i know we were talking about time do you know we have already been speaking for 15 minutes oh no <laughs> and no i wanted to go on a break <laughs> after 12 minutes so what's gonna okay. happen now we gotta go on a short break okay but when we come back we need to talk a little more about what you hope to accomplish when you are re-elected this year march 9th 2021 awesome That's the date, right okay what you hope to accomplish when you're re-elected as commissioner of Merrimack city so for those of you who have just tuned in we have been talking to commissioner yvette colburn uh, who is a candidate uh, commissioner with Merrimack city and i'm just trying to let this be known because of the global listeners we have and uh, she has won twice uh, 213 and 217 and she's running again on march 9th so stay tuned uh, when we return we'll talk a little bit on what she hopes to accomplish when she is re-elected as Commissioner of Merrimack City. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikma TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who is Who on Al Hikmat TV 24-7. So for those of you who have just tuned in, we're talking to Commissioner Yvette Colburn, Commissioner at Merrimah City, Florida, USA. We had a wonderful conversation with her before we went on the break. And now we want to talk a little bit with her on what she hopes to accomplish when she's re-elected. So welcome back to the show, Commissioner. Thank you, thank you. So getting right into that. the point because of time, <laughs> um, I know you have accomplished a lot yeah. since 2013 with Merrimah City and for Merrimah City. But before we get into the exact point of some of the other things you would like to accomplish, tell us a little bit about some of the COVID-19 services that you have initiated for the residents of Merrimah City. So let, let me say this. One of the things that I have been uh, truly passionate about and um, I have many initiatives with is with the elderly mm -hmm. population. And um, I've always been there to support them. Uh, one of my first initiatives, um, first of all, I should say the city of Miramar, we approved a $60 million bond. And with that $60 million bond, we were able to, to um, accomplished quite a bit. One of the things we did, we had a, a new police headquarters, uh, a fire station that we built out of that, mm -hmm. many parks improvements. And one of the things that mm -hmm. I truly pushed for was an adult daycare center, which is um, helps to, to make sure that our senior residents can stay at home as long as possible because like kids, you can take them to the daycare center and bring them back home and they can remain in, in the homes with family. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, we have senior centers where they can go every day, you know, for those who are healthier and, 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 and able to, to enjoy themselves, they can, they can be part of the senior centers and they take them on trips and they have meals together and so mm -hmm. forth. So when COVID-19 hit our community, we had to shut down all of those centers oh, yes. and send them home and, and, and ask them to please stay at home and stay safe. So one of the things that I immediately initiated was to have a hot meal program sent to their home. This was just my way of, of, of lifting their spirit, you mm -hmm. know, keep, make sure that they know that, that we, we, we're still trying to help them out and, and we're still there for them and also to make sure that they have that one balanced meal. At least we have something. There are other programs that provide uh, weekly, weekly food to them like Meals and Wheels and they have those and they're frozen. But this is a, a hot meal that's delivered yeah, like to them, that ready to eat. <laughs> saying that, it brings me to the, the famous saying, the way to a person's heart is through their stomach. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you're absolutely right. Yes. And um, I, I truly love our seniors. I love to see how they interact and, and and it's how they stay well, mm -hmm. you know, they have fun together. So uh, being able to deliver a hot meal to them once a week um, truly makes a difference to them. And um, that's one of the initiatives that we have been doing 
through COVID-19 and we'll continue to do it as long as uh, funding is there and as long as COVID-19 is, is there. Interesting. So we have done that. The city of Miramar, we deliver, we, we distribute in partnership with Feeding South Florida about 2,000 bags or boxes of, of food every week to families. Hmm. About 2,000 families we feed every, every week. And those boxes will have stuff like chicken, potatoes, rice, uh, vegetable, fruits, um, peas, a number of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we distribute whatever is provided to us by Feeding South Florida. I, I also understood that you did some sort of um, what do you call COVID testing for people at home. And then you have some vaccine um, services or something. Tell me about that. Well, for the, for the seniors, for seniors, we do testing at home. We do testing at home for individuals 65 years and, and older. And that was something that, that I truly um, encourage staff to do because we don't want our seniors to go out and get further so exposed. So whom, whom did you guys send to the homes, medical? Uh, I we mean, have what kind our of fire medical department. facilities? Our fire, our oh, fire department. Fire department. Yeah, they they, admi they administer the program. So they will actually go there, they have the testing, and they will test them. That is so unique, yeah. so wonderful. And tell us That's about the vaccine. I know the vaccine is new, but isn't there some sort of program you... You know, the, the, the vaccine is, is truly what's going to get us through this. You mm -hmm. know, as soon as we can get everyone vaccinated. Um, the vaccines, we are getting it from the federal government through the, you know, to the states mm -hmm. and the states, uh, they are distributing them through the health department. Right. Um, the city of Miramar has not received them themselves, you know, for us to administer, but we have our Memorial Hospital that has it. And throughout Broward County, there are many vaccination sites. Right. So we encourage uh, our residents um, they're being distributed now, they're being given to seniors 65 years of age and older. Those are the individuals that are receiving vaccine. Right now. Right now. And, and of course, our health care workers. Um, we, whenever I have any types of, of vaccination or I know that there is something open, I do reach out to our elderly and let them know so that they can they can they can get registered and they can be part of that some of them are getting it now through through their doctor's offices as well uh, but it is so important and i encourage them mm -hmm. to take the vaccine because you know many uh of our seniors and other individuals um they're a bit hesitant to yes. take it yeah. <laughs> and no. i to to all those i want to say you know i truly encourage them to take it um you don't want to get this. I have been fortunate uh, thus far <laughs> that I've not had it, but for thank the individuals God. that I, thank God, but for the individuals that I know that have contracted this disease, um, it, it has, this virus has been yes, terrible. Very terrible. So it, tell it's, us. It's very terrible. You know, time <laughs> is going on. Could you believe it? Is, I know you were is. wondering how we're going to get a, what we what we need to talk in all this time, but now we just got about three, it, four minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> so could you tell us and tell our viewers as I said, worldwide, we got viewers worldwide, but the world yeah. is so small nowadays. The globe has become so small with internet and social media. Yeah. You can never tell someone is sitting in India, in Africa, and they got a relative in Miramar City. Uh, ab absolutely. <laughs> they will pick up the phone and say, hey, we listen to your commissioner and such and such is the situation. So tell us what, you host, what are some of the things you think or you would love to accomplish when you are re-elected? Well, I th thank you for that. Uh, first of all, I want to say that, you know, I have served this city with uh, integrity, you know, with passion and um, with a passion for public service. And I want to continue to do that because I know I have made a difference in the mm -hmm. community and I would like to continue to be able to do so. Um, for instance, you know, sitting on the MPO board and being able to bring 50, almost $50 million to our city, mm -hmm. that money is going to be spent over the next five years. It hasn't been expended, it hasn't been spent yet. So I want to be part of that. I want to make sure that, that those sidewalks improvements actually happen. I want to make sure that, that, that when we approve something, um, that I can continue to do that. 
I want to know that we continue to be one Miramar, that, that we represent all of Miramar and we embrace our diversity. You know, we, we, we look out for each and every community because our communities are different and their needs are different. When I first ran, you know, I, we talked a lot about East Miramar and West Miramar. And, and now when you look at it, you see the, all the improvements that we have made in East Miramar, or you can say historic Miramar, and in all of the, the needs from West Miramar, you know, and, and they're, they're closer together. And it's about, when I say one Miramar, and, and I talk about the needs of our community, it's about the city um, being able to provide services that are needed mm -hmm. um, in, in an equitable way so that every community actually gets what they need in order to improve their community and in order to sustain their individuals. Um, so I want to continue to do that. I want to continue to be the progress of our cities, um, our communities here in the city of Miramar. And I, I look forward to continue to do that. Well, that is fantastic. <laughs> and I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't get an opportunity to share with you, but I think I need to share with you in the last minute or so that we have. Tell me. That in addition to Murma City having so many people from the Caribbean, yes. Murma City also has maybe the second largest amount of Muslims living in your city, if not the most Muslims. And why I said that, because, you know, as a clergy and as a community leader here, I, I do the maths with the different mosques okay. and the, 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 the geography of the mosque around the area. And from east of Miramar to west, you've got a lot of Muslim residents who go to mosques in other cities around, Pembroke right. Pines, Miami, wherever. But they reside in Miramar City which is so interesting. And I come across a lot of people. You got a lot of Muslims who got businesses in Miramar City. I am so glad that you brought that up because uh, that is the reason that I host an iftar dinner every year for the past three years. We didn't do it this past year because of COVID. But uh, I, have, I have a lot of partnership when it comes to the Muslim community and um, you know, working on on you know food distribution as well. I get a lot of assistance. We partner and in and um, we have a food bank in in one of our uh, facilities that that we've worked um, hand in hand with um, some of our Muslim community here to make sure that happen. We do book bag distribution as well mm -hmm. uh, with our Muslim community. So again, when I say uh, one Miramar, in addition to equal services, um, we have a very diverse city. Very and diverse. We want to make sure that we acknowledge everyone in the community, that we partner with everyone in the community. And the Muslim community has been one of those communities that, that has stood out, that, that they have been a partner um, in our community and um, I am truly I've been really happy to partner with them and and do the iftar dinner every year well thank you very much commissioner <laughs> I mean Merma is a blessed city it is so diverse it is so beautiful from the east to the west as you say historic Merma you can find all the different levels in Merma city which I love about Merma city it is, it is. really diverse different people of different faiths and different cultures and all levels. So you blessed to be a commissioner of Merrimah City and I hope you be the mayor one day very soon. Oh boy, thank you and so much. And then vine up to Kamala Harris position <laughs> one day also. I mean, you can never tell this is America and that's the beautiful thing about the democratic system in the United States of America. You know, the doors are Absolutely. always open as long as you are honest, trustworthy and are there for the community. So you got a couple of seconds to conclude. Well, you know, I am running for City of Miramar Commissioner uh, to continue the work that I have done. So I, I ask the voters to, to please support me. Election is on March 9th. And you can vote by mail. Uh, you can vote in person. There won't be any early voting. Uh, but I would appreciate the support. Um, again, I have... have you know, been there for the city of Miramar, support the city of Miramar. I've worked with, with 
with high standards, with integrity, and uh, I want to continue to do that and make a difference in the community. So um, I would appreciate the voters. I thank them so much for their support this coming March 9th. Stay tuned as we talk to Brother Yusuf. He hails from all the way Pretoria, the capital of South Africa. So he's going to let us know a little bit about his background, his journalism career, a very, very interesting career, his awards, his accomplishments as a Muslim, as a community leader, and his achievements in the field of journalism. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaqa Jaria, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or fi sabidullah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954-986-0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu 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 Allah Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24/7 online We are very blessed to have with us on today's program Brother Yusuf Ali Abramji. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it's a great honor and a privilege for me to join you uh, on Al Hikmat uh, Television. And for viewers out there, Brother Yusuf is a man with a lot of experience, a world of experience in journalism. So stay tuned as we talk to Brother Yusuf. He hails from all the way Pretoria, the capital of South Africa. So he's going to let us know a little bit about his background, his journalism career, a very, very interesting career, his awards, his accomplishments as a Muslim, as a community leader, and his achievements in the field of journalism. So, Brother Yusuf... Um, what, what motivated you to get involved in journalism? Well, um, I uh, started my career <laughs> at a very young age. Uh, um, I did my schooling in uh, Pretoria, the capital of uh, the Republic of South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and one will remember that was uh, in the dark days of apartheid, uh, under the apartheid government, uh, where blacks were oppressed uh, and the white community had privileges. Be it as it may, um, after I completed my, uh, my schooling, um, I always wanted to become a journalist, but out of convenience, uh, there was a teacher's training college, uh, Sheikh up the road, and I decided to become a teacher. Uh, so I enrolled uh, to become an uh, English and Afrikaans teacher for secondary school education. Uh, I obtained my three years diploma and after that, uh, I was posted back to the same school where I matriculated and suddenly my headmaster and my teachers suddenly became my colleagues. But for the record, I still call them sir and madam. Um, and um, I then uh, uh, taught for at least a year before I had an opportunity to be seconded as a spokesman for the then Department of Education uh, based in uh, the coastal city of Durban. Uh, and um, I took up that position and uh, about two or three years later went back to my uh, young li lifelong dream of becoming a journalist. I joined the National Broadcaster, the South African Broadcasting Corporation, um, at the parliamentary team in Cape Town uh, where I did reporting. Subsequently moved to Johannesburg to the headquarters and became a sub-editor at Television News. Um, and then <clears throat> I decided to return to my uh, newspaper, which I started while I was still at school, a community newspaper in Laudium, uh, Laudium being a predominantly historically so-called Indian area. Um, and I took over the newspaper, the community newspaper, the so-called knock and drop newspaper. Um, and then um, about three or four years later, um, I joined the first um, independent talk radio station in South Africa as a freelance reporter, 
uh, Radio 702, as it was known then. Speak, um, speaking about about Cape Town, brother uh, Yusuf, there used to be a brother that I knew I were his guest uh, in Cape Town. What year were you there in Cape Town? Well, like so many years ago, Sheikh, uh, I don't want to give you the year, but it will give my age away. But huh? I'm talking of I'm talking of at least um, thirty some odd years ago um, when I worked in Cape Town, and you know, Cape Town is one of the favourite holiday destinations for many foreigners from across the world. Yes, um, and, and Cape Town is very very popular. So yeah, and okay. Alhamdulillah, we have a large Muslim community in Cape Town. It's very active. Very, um, and very, then, and, and some individuals and organizations are doing really superb work as well. There, there used to be a brother. All I can remember, if you mention his name, I would remember it. His last name was Patel, and he was a very, very wealthy businessman. Wealthy businessman. I still remember the is, when I visited. The problem, is we, we, the, the, the problem is we have many Patels, <laughs> and we have very wealthy businessmen. <laughs> It will be difficult to give you an answer, but um, I'll, I'll possibly make some inquiries and it will be easy to ascertain uh, who it is. But Alhamdulillah, the community has really done um, many strides over the many years and they've really done well, well for themselves, Shah. Mm -hmm. So that um, sort of achievement and progress in journalism led you to winning some top award? You, you won the award as a top journalist well alhamdulillah you know it takes a lot of passion a lot of hard work uh, and let's be honest about it uh, awards are not uh, the end all in one's career it does spur you on to go to the next level it does spur you on and motivate you and alhamdulillah over the years i won a number of awards named the journalist of the year for at least three consecutive years by the then uh, victoria press club um, i won a number of security awards um, I even uh, about five years or six years ago received the highest order from the South African government, namely a national order uh, by um, the order of Baobab in silver for community service. Um, and Alhamdulillah, over the years, um, I, I continued my career from uh, a young reporter at 702, became um, the um, a full time reporter, became the crime editor. Crime is a big issue in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, then became the news editor, became the editor, became the station manager of the radio station, eventually became the group head of news and current affairs for the four radio stations within the stable. And then about five or six years ago, I decided to uh, call it quits with the corporate world. Um, and um, I then uh, actively became involved in the fight against crime. I'm currently the vice president of Crime Stoppers International, which is a global body very active in the United States and other parts of the world, even in the Caribbean, uh, for that matter. Well, uh, what's the name? What's the name of that um, crime organization? It's called Crime Stoppers International. I, I didn't get the second body. word. Crime? Crime Crime Stoppers, like Stop Crime Stoppers right. International. Crime Stoppers International. Very Good. active, very, very, very uh, popular in especially the Caribbean. Um, and by the way, I've been to the Caribbean, to many parts of that particular part of the world for conferences and meetings. Um, and um, the communities are very actively involved. So we are a charity or a non-profit organization, and we encourage communities to blow the whistle on crime. I'm also very actively involved in the fight against the illicit trade. Um, so the illicit trade is massive uh, across the world, but in South Africa, especially the cigarette trade is a big problem. Uh, I head up, uh, I founded uh, a non-profit organization called Text Justice South Africa. And Alhamdulillah, we're trying to make a difference in our community. And also over the years, thanks to people like Kari Ziad Patel from the Al Dindad Foundation, we've been active, very actively involved in um, uh, humanitarian work. Uh, I accompanied him a few years ago to Syria and to Turkey, mm -hmm, where we took mm -hmm. millions and millions of, of, of rands of uh, much needed aid to people in the refugee camps after the Aleppo attack. So Alhamdulillah, wherever we can, we try to make a difference in our community and see how we can really help the people in need, not only in South Africa, but across the world. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the Crime Stoppers International. What are some of the things you do? What, what do you do with um, international countries? How, how do you offer your services to them? 
Well, Crime Stoppers is an organization that was formed uh, in, um, in the United States of America many, many years ago. Um, and um, we encourage communities to blow the whistle on crime. So someone in your neighborhood, someone in your suburb, your town, your area knows who's involved in crime. So we, we're running programs in many areas where uh, people give anonymous tip-offs uh, to Crime Stopper programs. Mm -hmm. they in, we, the, the program then in turn give the information to police and we pride ourselves on anonymity. We protect the whistleblowers. And thanks to the many tip-offs that we have, uh, whether it's in South Africa, whether it's in the Caribbean, whether it's in America, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Australia, mm -hmm. um, on average, one arrest is made every 12 minutes thanks to a tip-off to a Crime Stoppers program. And we work very closely with uh, international and local law enforcement. Uh, and alhamdulillah, I was um, uh, appointed, elected uh, to the position of international vice president about uh, two years ago. And we're trying to make a difference. So uh, Crime Stoppers uh, prides itself on anonymous tip-off from members of the public. Listen, that is that is really, really interesting. And I think that you are very blessed, Brother Yusuf, for being involved and chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve in all these many organizations and um, community services. You know, time just goes, but we have already been speaking for approximately 10 minutes. So we got to go on a short break. And when we come back, when we come back, we'd like to talk a little more on that illicit trade organization and how you guys um, protect protect uh, businesses and people from, from these kind of corruptions and what you may want to recommend and suggest uh, to our viewers worldwide because we got a lot of viewers worldwide, what you may want to recommend uh, when it comes to prevention of crime. So for a few viewers out there, we have been talking to Brother Yusuf Abramji, a man with a lot, a lot of awards in the field of journalism, radio, TV, media in South Africa. And stay tuned when we come back after the short break. We'll continue our conversation with him, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever he wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, Bismillah rahman rahim, Ya ayyuha rasul. بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَغْتَ رِسَالَتُهُ Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Qur'an. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Qur'an, Help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. For those of you who have just tuned in, we have been speaking to Brother Yusuf Ali Abramji, a man with a wonderful experience, a blessed personality, uh, especially when it comes to journalism. He hails from all the way Pretoria, South Africa, won a lot of awards in journalism and is well known for his community services. So stay tuned as we continue this conversation with Brother Yusuf. So welcome back to the show, Brother Yusuf. Shukran, Chef, and thank you. Yes, so as we were saying, um, what would you recommend to people out there worldwide when it comes to, to crime? Because with COVID, 
with all these businesses shutting down and people without jobs and a lot of um you know i mean we don't want to sound negative but we want to sound realistic islamically speaking as muslims we believe in alhamdulillah ala kulli hal we thank allah under all condition but from from a realistic point of view there are a lot of problems in the world with covid there are a lot of crime there are a lot of crime and rise in crime because of loss of job and the economical situation etc so what would you suggest to our viewers worldwide well crime is not only a problem in south africa it's not only a problem in the caribbean it's not only a problem in other parts of the world uh, it's a international problem chef and as we know <coughs> yes some countries are more safer than others uh, and crime uh, continues to rage ugly head in many parts of the world um I often say we cannot hide we need to confront the brutal facts. South Africa has very very high levels of crime. Um without scaring you, we have an average of uh, about 57 murders each and every day in South Africa. Uh we have um, house invasions, we have rapes, we have robberies, uh we have kidnappings uh, by the hour. Um but again, other parts of the world have a similar problem. The reality is we cannot only expect these or our law enforcement agencies to fight crime fighting crime is a responsibility of each and every citizen so if you know for example your neighbor is involved in selling drugs instead of keeping quiet and protecting these criminals do the moral thing do the right thing and blow the whistle on them and that's exactly what crime stoppers encourages people to do become an active citizen um no sense complaining on facebook and on twitter about crime when you just put up your hands and you say i'm giving up to criminals ask yourself the question how can you get involved in your community and that's what we've been trying to do in south africa over a long period of time is to say how can we get and encourage communities to join hands to work together to join a whatsapp group in your neighborhood and fight this criminal scourge and we know across the world crime is a problem i mean i have friends in the caribbean we know in areas like trinidad tobago again like in south africa and other parts of the world crime continues to rage ugly head and that is why it's important for all of us to join hands and to fight the scourge so i know you're mentioning about people getting involved in assisting but as the vice president as the vice president of crime stoppers international which is a very powerful position gives you a lot of experience in the field of stopping crime what would you recommend muslim organizations to do muslim organizations to do to help the government well help the government but you're really helping the people but working with the government to help prevent prevent crime How, what would you suggest to muslim organizations Sheikh my appeal is not only to muslim organizations whether you muslim whether you christian whether you are hindu whether you are from the jewish faith whether you are buddhist whatever the case may be crime and and wrong doing affects all of us and and we know that especially as muslims it's our duty to protect our families it's our duty to protect our property within the framework of the law and that is why i often say to people never take the law into your own hands work within the framework of the law so called jungle justice doesn't work it will end you it will give you that orange overall it will it will end you behind bars so my advice to anyone across the world especially our muslim communities let's be seen let's be heard let's roll up our sleeves and fight this criminal scourge so whether it is terror whether it is drug dealing whether it is any type of wrong doing it is our moral and our uh, our 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 right to stand up and to fight the scourge and let's become active let's work with law enforcement agencies let's work with governments across the world and see how we can create a safer world right the reason why i mention muslim org- organizations brother yusuf it's because you know um a lot of the non muslim organizations they do get involved they are already very active 
in many of these kind of activities but for some unknown reason not very many muslim organizations take the initiative and the leadership in this kind of community citizenship services in preventing crime and that's a problem i have because i think um yes other non-muslim organizations do it and they invite muslims to participate but a person like you who are blessed with this position um crime stoppers international vice president you know you can be very vocal in encouraging muslim organizations to take a leadership role because you know this is something that islam stands for community justice community services services to, to help the um, to help humanity and if crime is such a disaster then muslim leadership and organizations should take a major role Sheikh, uh, I'm so happy you asked me this question and thank you for your very uh, question and comment, which, which is spot on. Um, thank you. Muslims throughout the world seem to be taking a backseat in the fight against crime specifically. I don't know what we are scared of. So whether we're in Australia, whether we're in Europe, whether we're in the Middle East, whether we're in other parts of the world, very often you find Muslim organizations and or individuals always trying to say we we rather work in the background we don't want to come out in the in the forefront of fighting crime and i think that is wrong i don't know what we're scared of you know um if allah forbids we're going to be attacked remember this is a jihad we have to fight this war we are doing it for the sake of protecting our our property our families and very often the term jihad is mistaken for uh, other purposes which i don't want to go into right now yes so i think it's important that we take this message across the world to say especially members of the muslim community get involved and i'm going to say it right here on your show this evening you know we're also very often afraid of speaking out against terrorism and terror and terror and terrorism doesn't only come from one section of the community very often muslims are labeled terrorists very often we are seen to be extremists but let's not forget terror comes from each and every sector of society. Yes. And that is why we have to stand up, we have to raise our voices, and we must say it is wrong. Whether it comes from a certain section of the community or a different section of the community, is irrespective. And we must take the stand, and we must be vocal, we must be seen. Because let's not forget, we travel the world, and we know that the, the Muslims, the perception or the myth that Muslims are involved in this type of wrongdoing makes it difficult for people like yourself and I, when we travel, uh, where we are questioned, where we are interrogated, where we are searched. And that is why Muslims must take a stand against crime or any form of wrongdoing. It is our religious duty. And my appeal is for Muslims across the world, take a stand, get involved, be vocal, be heard, become active global citizens so that we can make our mark and reclaim our rightful place so that we can create a safer world. That is wonderful and most beautifully said, Brother Yusuf. The leadership, the leadership role by Muslims when it comes to crime is very important because we cannot just take a back seat, as you rightly said. And I support you 100%. I support you 199% on this. And I think that's one of the reasons Allah has blessed you to be the vice president of crime stoppers international uh, you you got the experience you got the, the 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 gift of being able to to assist people and help prevent and stop crime well you know again time is such time is just going out against us time just <laughs> goes and we have been speaking for 10 minutes again so uh, I give you the couple last seconds to close and what you would like to say to our viewers worldwide. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. Maybe we have to continue this another time, get you back on the show. We want to um, really, really thank you for taking the time to come on the show with all these wonderful um, positions and responsibilities that you are blessed with. Um, it is indeed, 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 indeed a blessing. So could you kindly conclude with a few comments or remarks? Well, Chef, thank you very much again for the invitation. It's lovely to be part of your, of your very popular show. 
um, I must say there's a lot we can talk about. Uh, I often say, Chef, um, firstly, before being an anti-crime activist, before being an editor, before being a, a journalist, uh, whatever profession you involve in, we need to remember that we are Muslims first. Definitely. Uh, it is our duty, it is our duty to make sure that uh, we promote our religion and we mustn't be shy to be Muslims. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I went, Alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity uh, with my wife to go on our first Hajj in 2016. Um, and uh, when I got back, um, somebody asked me, um, what is the one thing that changed in your life? And I said to him, you know, physically, uh, before I went to it, uh, on Hajj, I never had a, a small beard. Alhamdulillah, I came back and I decided to keep my beard uh, mm -hmm. uh, with, 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 with the duas and, uh, that we made. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I think what we need to do, Chef, is to ask ourselves the question, how can I create a better world? So whether you are doing community work in your small little area, whether you're doing it on a national scale or a continental scale or international scale, remember there are millions and millions of people across the world who are in need. Whether they're in Aleppo, in Syria, whether they're in the Caribbean, whether they're in South Africa, in a Sheikh settlement, whether they're in India or Bangladesh or wherever. Ask yourself the question, how can I make a difference as an individual? If we all take the small acts of kindness, small acts of generosity, and make a difference, inshallah, we'll all be able to create a, a better world and we can create a movement to show that Muslims, irrespective of who we help, are making a difference across the world. And that will be the best advertisement and the best showcase for our religion, inshallah. Well, thank you very much, Brother Yusuf Ali Abramji. That was well said. And uh, because time is running out on us, we want to thank you very much for taking the time from all the way South Africa, Pretoria, South Africa, to be with us on this show. May Allah bless you and continue to guide and protect you and all of us. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuha rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik Wa in lam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high-quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi Indo-Pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani and many many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad and Tobago. You can call us at 473-4676 or call 476-3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com.